welcome to today's episode of Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have returning guest, uh, filmmaker extraordinaire, Jake Perry, wrestler, Hello. host, all around good dude, hack, Tony himself. Here we go. We're going to start this. We, we were hoping that you would take your time and we we're going to talk crap about you for like 20 minutes. Oh, that's what I was about to say. You're already starting it off lying to everybody, saying I'm a good guy. <laughs> we see how you are, Paul. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll talk you up a good game, then talk crap to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, the, the hack wouldn't have it any other way, brother. <laughs> see, what an unholy trio this fucking is. <laughs> oh, this, this is a great trio. Even though I'm like, I'm sitting there staring at myself and I'm all blurry as shit here. Yeah. Ugh. What the hell? Jake's got the fucking Fix that background shit. all Dude, set up. Damn it. What? What background? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> See, y'all, you got the good background. <laughs> he just got brick wall. I got, I got my just junk stacked everywhere. Literally, I was playing Hot Wheels with my kid. <laughs> uh, Should I just grilled ribs? Grilled ribs? I, yep. I, 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 nice. Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have. Uh, I think we're having uh, pork roast when I get done with this. Nice. I don't know how that works, but Jake just like turns around and just handed Emily from the movie like, the soda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There goes it. Yeah, I keep kind of teaching me how to fucking do that. <laughs> I'm like, here, y'all hold uh, this. See, I, I can, I can yeah. just do this. I, I can just wish it away. <laughs> oh, don't wait. Don't snap. Don't snap, dude. Put that down. What are you doing? <laughs> Got that. Wait a minute, I guarantee if you snap, I am one of the people that the universe is going to be like, nope. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I got it. Oh, shit. <laughs> got Stormbringer. Got the bendy gauntlet. I got lightsabers. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> you got the best toys, I swear. You're like a fucking superhero fucking <laughs> carrot top. <laughs> it, it's so funny. I keep telling my, my family that at, at the top of the steps, the door that goes down into my area, I'm going to put one of them bookshelf doors and I'm going to put like canned goods and shit on it. So it looks like a, uh, like it's just, that's the pantry. Yeah. It goes in the door and it goes up the steps into our, into our kitchen. And I want to just wait till I have grandkids like down the road, a decade or so, you know, whatever, if my kids ever decide to have kids, you know, whatever. And I was like, I want to leave that door just slightly ajar for the kids to find it one day and then they're going to come down here and there's going to be all these helmets and lightsabers. and <laughs> <laughs> That would be incredible. And, and the, the cool part about it is I'm going to get a, uh, I got a man, I want to get a mannequin so I can put like my, my stormtrooper trooper uniform on it and my, all my shit. So people come down like, what the fuck was grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty like grandpa. I got, I got one of those from a snuggle dungeon, the whole bookshelf secret room. No, it's just it's just a closet. It's just a closet. <laughs> See, I got I got I got all this cool shit, but I have it just literally stacked everywhere because I don't have no place to put it. <laughs> oh yeah, all my cool shits in boxes right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is me. Uh, we just moved here, so we don't have room because we're in a rental, and. Uh, yeah, all of my awesome shit, like my antique cameras, uh, all of my movie re- memorabilia, all sitting in boxes. Yeah, it's all in my <laughs> it every day. Well, it, I, I got I got movie posters everywhere, and I'm going to start framing up other posters so that I can always have a different rotation of movie posters. Nice. And um, I had a guy who used to work at a Cinemark, so I have some of the signage from Cinemark. So I'm gonna put it like at the doorways and stuff. So when you come down the steps, my goal is, is I want to get old school either arcade or movie theater uh, carpet for the downstairs. Oh yeah. So when people oh. walk in, <laughs> oh god, like the fucking movie theater, the yep. roller ring, the just oh, uh, yeah. just that weird ass green thing. lines. Yep. Red square. <laughs> oh, I, that's what I want to do. I want I want to put like fucking track lighting around. I like the 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 strip lighting all the way around and everything. I want to make it look like it's. I don't know, like like a nineteen eighties arcade back there in the nice. corner and shit. So, I want I want I want a, I want curtains made out of the old bunk bed mats because old bunk beds would just be like a box spring mattress thing with this generic superhero just fucking on it. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping to find that pattern because I want to make curtains <laughs> curtains out of those. We didn't get. I had that when I was a kid, but now my boys they had it and it was like a um, an old west. 
on one of them. And then my dad ended up buying like a year later, buy another one for my boys. And then it ended up having like a nautical theme. It had like boats and in, in the, 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 yeah. The, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you're just going to cover it. What the fuck? <laughs> just some random shit they found. Oh, yeah. Like, fuck it. That looks good. Speaking of random shit, last night, Jake, did you meet Ginger Lynn Allen? No, she wasn't there. What? She was supposed to be there. Uh Ah, okay. Frank and Cut would meet her at Frank and Cut. (laughs) I always hate that, man. When you go to a con, you're all prepped to meet somebody. You got all your shit in the van or whatever. You go to meet them and they're like, oh, yeah, they're not here. Oh, well, this one was a movie premiere. Ah, yes. Well, maybe- yeah, I was supposed to be there. I-, I was supposed to come out there. Sorry, I didn't make it. Uh, went did a hosting gig, and uh, you had the William Blunt High School, you know, with the wrestling team out there, and you had the coaches and everything. And then all of a sudden, forgot about Dre hit, and everybody's like, oh, my God, I know Hack is not here. And I come walking through the curtain, wearing a suit. Everybody fucking went bananas they were like i know where you're not getting ha- hack in a suit <laughs> so it was a nice little surprise for him a did nice you at least wear the leather jacket over the suit i thought of that i, I really oh. did i thought of it but uh the suit was starting to rip in the back i turned into the uh, fucking chris farley fat guy in a little coat <laughs> so i was like trying not to put any more pressure to like rip it in half in front of the school and all the teachers and everything <laughs> like that Couple couple years back, Tina wanted me to go to a wedding. <clears throat> so literally, I'm, I'm like wearing this dress shirt, and I haven't I haven't bought a dress shirt in forever. But I had lost weight, but I gained muscle. So I went from being kind of chubby, so my it was all down here, to my arms were tight. And I went, I think I need a new shirt. Tina goes, Why? I went rip, and I ripped it in the back, and I go, What's oh, that? Dude. <laughs> Dude, I would love to do that one day. <laughs> so I, up, I had to run to like Walmart real quick and buy me like a like seventeen dollar button up shirt. <laughs> Still got the lines in it and shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. That, that this is the shirt I had on last night was the Walmart, and then the suit. Uh, I, I forgot the Goodwill tag was still hanging off. So as I'm walking out, I pop it <laughs> and throw it off, and it still had the. Uh, Old lodgings in the pockets from the old guy who passed away, and his wife's just like, "All right, take all the shit and go dump it out behind the goodwill." Please, <laughs> like, you know what? What's gonna happen to all of our shit? They're gonna be like, "Just go toss it." There's, there's a thrift store next door. Throw it in the alley behind. <laughs> we, we had a dude the other day who was talking about buying a damn suit from a, uh, um, like a goodwill or some vintage thrift shop. He goes, puts it on, he reaches his hand in the pocket, pulls out two hundred dollars in cash. Nice. Oh, I was like, "Are you shitting me?" I was like, "I was like, I heard a girl I used to work with. She bought a purse at like some little vintage place years ago. Gets home, starts going through all the little side pockets and shit. Finds an eighth of weed in it. Ooh, <laughs> even better. Even <laughs> better. I'm sitting there. My son goes, "Well, what comes out better, Dad? Two hundred dollars in cash or the eighth? I was like, "Well, it depends on how long ago it was." Because at one point <laughs> this area was really dry, so an eighth lead would have been probably two hundred dollars. And see that? Uh, see, they found two hundred dollars on a sack of weed. I found some cough drops from eighty two. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing clear. There, there, there was a receipt from Shoney's in the inside pocket from like ninety two. <laughs> like <laughs> that suit had not been washed or worn since the last time he wore it to church. <laughs> And like put it in the closet and said, I'm done with that shit. <laughs> so I, I, I gotta ask Jake, man, do you do you when you get ready to do a movie, do you like go to like scouring like the like the the, the junk stores and stuff looking for like nerf guns and Fuck uh, yes, stuff? I do. Okay, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. In fact, Tony could tell you when we were filming Tape Worm Z. I took him, Ocho, and Miguel, the guy that played Herman, all to the uh, Goodwill that was there and bought all of their costumes. And you should have seen me coming up with the Herman costume, but Yes, yeah, it was <laughs> It came to life inside that thrift store. 
And then there was one thing, and uh, Miguel was like, I don't know about this. And Jake's like, too late. It's that. <laughs> like, it's happening. Your so now you don't know, you don't know Herman's, you don't know his uh, ethnic at all because he has this <laughs> Russian cap on and this like outdoor stuff, but he, 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 you think he's Hispanic, but he don't sound Hispanic. So <laughs> you can't pinpoint where the hell Herman is from. <laughs> and then I'm looking through, and of course, Jake sees this Ben Franklin t shirt. <laughs> and he's like, that's what you're wearing in the movie. So I'm wearing this Ben Franklin shirt, and he's got like sunglasses on, and it says America on it. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> he found this shirt, and he's just looking at it, and he's like, you have to wear this in the movie. Uh, Ocho in the jean shorts, and the and he found this bright red shirt that said like, I'm lazy or something on the front. <laughs> We, we found other stuff in the store. It was like, oh, Jake, how about this? And he's like, no. Turns around, walks away. Fires up, no, this, this. <laughs> no, no. There was no, there was no process in like, oh, we're trying to pick out costume. Jake's like, that looks ridiculous. That's what you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's other stuff like uh, like the like you said, the Nerf guns. Uh, if you see the film, uh, Commander pulls out this knife. I watched Jake buy this from like a dollar store, and he's like, "Yeah, that's gonna be the knife." Buys it, and it's the one dollar little single piece mode plastic that's hollow, and then he he sets it up, and now it looks as like this badass like outer space pocket knife, and it was just a dollar toy. So he yeah. does do that with with the guns and everything else. I'm, I'm telling Jake stories. Point. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, last time, Jake, we were talking about uh, the commander's gun. I was like, man, I ain't never seen a Nerf gun like that. And you're like, no, nah, man, it's this one. It makes lights. And it, it's <laughs> like, oh, well, that's why it's not a fucking Nerf gun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous some of the shit that I've used, man. Was that a gun for laser tag? Was that a laser tag gun? No, it was like a dollar store. It was it was like some electronic. There's There's a bubble on the back. You can see it. Well, there's a thing that spins in there and lights up and shit, and I didn't want you to see it, so I had to paint it black. But oh, I like the nice. style of the gun. And, in fact, Miguel had it. There's so many things, dude, like uh, on Krongar and the Hippopotamus. Did you ever watch that one yet? That is not watched yet, no. But you spoil away. Uh, okay, well, that one I found. I just walked into Dollar Tree, saw these gnomes. And then <laughs> they had all of their houses. So I was like, <laughs> I looked at my wife. I was like, get a basket. She was like, oh, God damn it. So she goes and gets a basket. And I buy every bit of this set. And then I go get these two giant ass poster boards. And I draw the ground from the village. And then I green screen the other ones. And I put them up. And then... I call Miguel because he's coming over that night. I was like, yo, do you have a dragon? He was like, I probably do. I was like, okay, bring it. He was like, what the fuck are we doing? I was like, you'll fucking see when you get here. <laughs> it, it's so funny because you guys do this. I'm not even making movies, but I got friends that are making movies up here. So literally, like my back room. Any, I have people who sell me airsoft guns like all the time. So I have like an armory in the back room of the shop. Yeah. My kid comes out and he's got an AR-15 and everybody's like, I'm like, bud, put put that down because I don't need you taking that outside and getting shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. But they're, they're like, why the hell do you got all this stuff? I was like, just in case. I loaned it some cosplayers. I've loaned them to people making movies and stuff because they're the really nice metal airsoft guns and they're look right. real and and uh, like, fuck it. And the same with Nerf guns. They're like, I've loaned Nerf guns to people. And they're like, I didn't even paint it. We just used it. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. <laughs> no, I'll paint the shit. I go overboard with the paint jobs, honestly. Uh, like, you could zoom in on them and look at them and be like, wow, this is a lot of detail. And it's yeah. absolutely pointless. Like on those plastic knives he was talking about. I had to do two because there was a scene where you stabbed well it wasn't a retractable blade or anything so i had to do one where it had a removable blade and uh i had to paint these two damn things and they had these it looked like it could be like leather wrapped so i painted it up like that like it was golden wrapped and way too much detail the shit you're never even gonna see 
Oh man, there there is a pipe used in the movie for a fight scene. It is literally a piece of plastic tubing Jake's found. And next thing you know, he's got a black, he's he's got the silver in it. And next thing you know, it looks like a metal pipe you would find somewhere. Super detailed. There's no up close shots of it. <laughs> I mean, if you were to hold it, you would not know it wasn't a steel pipe someone was wielding around. <laughs> heavily detailed on this pipe that's just the random like weapon like I'm gonna fight with this that's super detailed Could, couldn't hurt anything man smash it over somebody's head you never feel a thing but overly detailed like th- th- there's one worm in the movie that I wasn't sure if if he CGI'd it I was like man that almost looks CGI and I swear to god it's like you rewind it I'm like was that worm a fake worm no, it was not. It was a practical worm, but Jake was so heavy on the details and like the wet goodness of it, so it looks all slimy. Was so clean and so like you'll see it, and I, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I bet money on it, Paul. You'll pause the movie and you'll be like, "That's that fucking worm. That's the one." <laughs> like it is so clean that you you're not sure if it's real or if it's CGI. And it's a practical effect, so fuck CGI. Jake wins. He, he, he beats he beat CGI all day. The, the cool part about it is, man, you can make, and it shows, because if you put and make stuff look really cool on film and you got a low budget, it it ups the, the, the value of the picture by just making stuff look decent. Because you, like I said, I've got people like borrowed stuff. They didn't even bother painting it. I'm like, at least make it look right. Make it look right. good. You know, they're just like, oh, nobody's going to pay attention to it. Fucking nobody's yeah. going to pay attention to See, it. See, that's the shit. That's why I pay attention to all the little details is because I'll find that one little fucking thing and be like, that bugs the fuck out of me. Why is that like that? Yes. Yes. Wait, oh, what the fuck was I watching the other day? And it bugged the shit out of me. The whole entire time I'm watching, you can see it. It's like just this like plastic toy. Just sitting there, and you're just like, "This is a toy. That's yeah. I can see it. It's a toy. It's right. It's right there. Just fucking okay. <laughs> move it off the table. Come on, come on." <laughs> you know, and and I go back because people are like, "Oh, it's it's an it's an homage." No, you're just being cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go back to the old school. Like, was it Deadly Manus where they flip the truck over and it says Tonka on the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're doing that on purpose. And you want it to look like that? That's one thing. But when you're trying to make it take it seriously and make it look cool, yeah. Oh yeah. Holy crap! I I, I I can get by with that because all my shit's awful. So even when I fuck up, I just tell you that it was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I, I remember that Tonka truck though. I remember that so vividly when it yep. flips and you can see it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it was just. Kick it over. Oh, we got to do that. I want to do that. I want to film. I, I do want to do the Japanese, like, stomping through the cardboard city fight scene. Like, where I turn into, like, you know, Apache chief. <laughs> See, I, I have I have an ongoing joke about how I'm big in Japan. And uh, it, it, it all goes back to going to anime conventions, people taking pictures of me, thinking I was somebody else. Then I end up meeting the person they thought I was. And me and him were sitting there talking. Long story short, I, I used to go to anime conventions. Uh, people take pictures of me. End up, I finally, after like a few shows, I was like, hey, why do you want a picture of me? And like, you're a wrestler. Japanese kid. I'm like, okay, okay. Who are you? I thought you were Masada. Masada. And I'm like, Masada. And then I end up meeting Masada like years later. Me and him were sitting there talking at a, at a wrestling event. And he goes, he goes, man, they'll take it wrong. He goes, they think we all look alike. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, both of us have the same hair. We both had long beards. I was like, Masada's like 6'2". I'm 5'10", yeah. if I'm lucky. <laughs> and we we look this much alike. But yeah, we look. And then, so it started. It, it snowballed. It was like, oh, Paul's big in Japan. Then there's a picture of me where I'm at a Comic-Con, and there's a dude in a really good Godzilla costume. And me and him were standing there. I got my arm around Godzilla, and I posted, Paul's big in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so the whole thing is, is that I'm going to go to Japan and, or I want to make a movie where I fight monsters. And I'm just, because I'm, I go to Japan. I'm normal. When I leave here, I get there. I'm massive. And, <laughs> and then I got to fight monsters when I get there. You do look like Masada though. You do. I, I, I know this man. I know this man. <laughs> and y'all do similarly look like. Now Masada is a monster who... <laughs> He's an animal out there killing people, but okay. uh, I watched him pull the uh, uh, the the uh, ring tarp, the mat, and everything, and then power draw uh, pile drive some dude on the wood, and you're just like, oh fucking hey! But yeah, he pulled all that shit back. Had him had a hardcore match. wasn't a death match. It was a hardcore match. But so. oh, speaking speaking of hitting the mat really hard, uh, we did a I did a Heroes and Legends convention, and I have a ten by ten ring. Uh, and it all went to shit. Jake actually had to come save me from that thing. <laughs> he had to come get me and the ring to get me out of this hotel before they locked me out. But Enzo Enzo jumps in the ring and he's taking fucking pictures, and he's charging for his gimmick pictures in that ring. And I'm like, bitch, you didn't pay me. Uh, so I, I got his ass back. I knew he was going to do a spot in the ring, so I took all the pads off. It was just straight wood, and I watched him fucking eat shit on it. And I'm standing there beside him. I was like, that's what you get when you don't pay your tab, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use what I brought to make money, and then I'm fucking yeah. standing over there. You know, at just... least if you're going to do that, go, hey, man, <laughs> mind if we shoot some ring go, Float me a few bucks, man. I, I drag that bitch here. Just float me a few bucks, you know. But you oh know, no, he acted. He would act like he's like ah, whatever, and I was like, yeah, whatever, bitch. I'm like fucking pull the match out, let him eat shit on it, and I was like, no, no, fuck him. He's a dick. <laughs> That's why he ain't wrestling. He's, he's a great guy. Whatever. <laughs> there, there's got to be a reason he ain't wrestling for nobody. So I know, man. Don't 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 use the other guy's gimmick to make your money. Like I, I couldn't make any money off of it because he fucking took it up. <laughs> he owes me five hundred bucks. <laughs> I owe half that to Jake for saving me. <laughs> oh, shit. So I just want to reiterate on what he's talking about right there. Yes. Yeah. I had just moved to East Tennessee. Yeah. Don't know my fucking way around. I still have to use navigation to get anywhere, bud. So he's like, hey, I can't get a fucking ride. Well, I got a truck. I can carry it. So I'm like, all right. I came to work at 630 this morning. I'll fucking, after I get off work, I'll drive all the way over there. It's like an hour away. It's not that bad. But then Tony lives like an hour and a half from there, which is still an hour from me. Yeah. I get to the town where this shit is, and there's some random fucking Jeep thing. Oh, God. Jeep thing. There's like 30,000 Jeeps having a meet. And when I say 30,000, I mean literally 30,000. Yeah. So once I hit town, it takes another hour and a half to go four blocks to the hotel. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was It was bad. I'm like, really? Thank, thank you. you. Warn me that part, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like an hour to get to town. Get over some to of get through town's another hour. You're gonna have to. Be, have yeah, to. so I got home at almost 4 a.m. <laughs> oh, and I live out in the woods. Like I live next door to where they filmed the first Evil Dead, the, where the cabin is. That's where I'm at. If that gives you any indication where I'm at, I'm just out in the woods. Like a stone's throw away from where they filmed the Evil Dead. <laughs> There's nothing here. Jeez. Nothing. I'm outside right now. I can yell, go shoot my gun off. You can ask Jake. Yeah. <laughs> it sucked. It sucked getting there and it sucked getting back. Uh, so now it don't move. It just stays here. <laughs> like never taking that thing anywhere ever again. It, it ain't moving until somebody walks up and wants to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 then it can go. When I move, I probably just leave it fucking sitting where it's at. <laughs> I just swing down, pick it up. <laughs> yeah. it Next homo, there's imagine finding that. Be like, oh fuck, there's, oh, a, there's an arena in here. <laughs> um, a couple a couple years back, I walked by the old Greyhound station in Dayton. The lights are still on in there. It's not great. I, they don't have it 
you know, I think they still pick people up there, but there's no, you can't go inside the building anymore. And we walked by and I stopped and I walked back and I looked in. There's a wrestling ring in there. <laughs> like what? all apart. It's all apart. It was all up against the wall. But I could see the the, the turnbuckle. I could see a turnbuckle with the yellow NWA logo just thrown in a corner of this building, random ass building that is having to peek into. And part of me is like, what if I could call that building and see if I could pick that thing up? Well, <laughs> for all I know, it, it's rented by them because I knew that that at one point, a lot of them guys would, would rent a place local and they would store all their shit. Yeah. And when they come back through, they would just go grab it. That way they didn't have to drag the truck. They just, okay, we got it. We're at the convention center. Boom, it's across the street. All they would do is have to hustle it across the street. But now I'm like, I need to go back by there and see if it's still there. Because, like I said, that was, geez, that was before the pandemic. So, shit, that's fine. Oh, dude, you need to drive by there and go look. And if yeah, it is, yeah. take it, man. It's... <laughs> yeah, that was the, that was a, um, we had an, we were at an impact show across the street. So, and, uh, that's where I got to fucking meet uh Necro and uh, uh um Johnny Nitro, Johnny Morrison, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Insert last name here. Yeah, uh, yeah, Johnny Everything, Johnny Impact, Johnny Ace, Johnny Blaze. Fuck him and his name change. <laughs> he was pretty he, oh. he was cool to me, but you know, but it was one of the ones where uh because I was sitting there, I was like, man, I was like, if because I didn't know he was he was just signing whatever you had on you. And uh, I was like, shit, I left the movie out in the car. And he goes, which movie? I was like, Hercules Unbound. He goes, oh, fucking bring it. I'll sign it. <laughs> he was all happy that I had it. <laughs> he signed Hercules? <laughs> yeah, because he's he's in uh, Hercules Unbound. He was in it. I didn't get I didn't get it signed. Though. That's the crappy part about it. Because by the time I, I, I had time to go out to the car, find it, get it, and come back in, he was already back in the back getting ready for his match. So Oh, um, damn. I never, I never got it. Ended up getting it signed, so. Still yeah. sitting in my collection somewhere. Collecting I, dude, I, I, that night, Jake saved me. I did get to meet Dr. D. David Schultz, the guy who bitch smacked the shit out of John Stoss. Oh, I was I was real happy. The guy who just knocked the shit out of that reporter. So that was fun. I think um, it's fake. Just feel fake. Well, wow. Yes. But uh, no, Polly, we got to tell you, man, Tate Worms the. Uh, we're we're like in the second week of its release, uh, so so we need all your listeners, all your fans. If you want to see the best sci-fi horror movie of all time, it's uh, you can see it right behind Jake, right there, and he will gladly send you one. Uh, and uh, since we're on your show today, for all your fans, full price for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna take it. We're a double bird, cup it in half. So you can- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. So, w- w- uh, how much does it cost to buy a copy of Tapeworm Z? Uh, Tapeworm Z <laughs> DVDs are 20 and Blu ray is 25. But I'll tell you, looking at them, I I finally see the benefit of DVD or Blu ray versus DVD. I've always kind of been like, eh, whatever. But when I was comparing the products, making sure they all worked and everything, the Blu ray looks exactly how I color graded it. And then I see the DVD, I'm like, fucking YouTube. What is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> well, me, me and the wife were, were laughing the other day because we were watching um, Fallout last night, matter of fact. And you're sitting there watching it and I got my big TV, it's 4K, it's super crisp and clear and you just see like the zit on the dude's nose you can see like the dumb shit. I was like, I, I'm like, there's certain movies though. You got to go back and go. All right, we'll just watch the DVD because you can't see yeah. every little imperfection. Oh yeah, I can't yeah. watch Godzilla movies on Blu-ray. It's too crisp, too clear. Well, see, my thing is, I it may sound shitty to people, but I avoid 4K because of that. I I feel like it ruins the cinematic experience because it makes it too fucking real. Like you said, you're seeing the little pimple. You're seeing every little detail. So Blu-ray is just way less compressed. So the colors are where I actually set them or the color colorist yeah. set them. 
Um, so it looks a lot better. Um, I noticed a lot of on the DVD on there's dark parts. Well, you saw it. It's all at night. So yeah. that's yeah. important. And on DVD, some of the dark parts, you lose a lot of the detail that are actually in the movie. But uh, the one you saw was DVD quality. Yeah. Man, you got to. It, it's weird. I remember the first time, like, being younger, and you see the stuff from, like, BBC, the stuff coming out of, like, Europe, and they were, like, the first ones to go, like, digital. And watching it, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, the first time seeing HD. And Jake's right about that. Like, it does the same to me. It takes away from the cinema effect. It takes the enjoyment. Of, I'm enjoying a movie uh, when it's in that 4K and everybody's crystal clear and I can see inside their pores. I'm like, cool, I can see all these extra details, but I didn't want to see his fucking pores anyway. I didn't want to see the bugger hanging out of the guy's nose. I'd rather, uh, like, everybody look gorgeous. And now I'm watching these movies being remastered and I'm seeing that all these actresses that I thought were, like, pretty back in the day had, like, Cigarette yellow to fucking teeth and like you, you can see that you can see the makeup line around. Yeah, the side yeah, of you face. see yeah. hard, well, hard ass makeup lines. Dude, I'm hard I'm a big, I'm a big <laughs> fan of the like the lone wolf and cub movies. Love those. <laughs> I I was watching them all, the other day, and you can legit see where the wig met the dude's hair through the. Yeah. And I can't. I'm just watching it. I'm like, eh, I'm going back to DVD to watch this because this is not. <laughs> Yeah, but, but then I watched um, fucking um. There's a movie I watched. It was a horror movie, and I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. Now I'll remember it once we're done shooting. I'll probably be like, I'll be on there going, "That was this movie," like I do with my kids. <laughs> uh, but when the monsters are in the dark, and on VHS. DVD, even Blu-ray, you can't see all the monsters, all the, the the things. As soon as you go to 4K, you see the fact there's a shit ton of them. And, you know, when you watch it old school, there it looks like there might be five. But when you watch it, when it's all crystal clear, there's like 20. And I'm like, where the fuck did all these people come from? <laughs> they were not in the original. You tell me you went and edited that shit. Put that back in there. Yeah. <laughs> the superimposing of the same five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that compression shit, man. And I, I feel like that's probably why uh, Alien vs. Predator, when it first came out, you remember everybody complained about how fucking dark it was. See, I and thought AVP Requiem was the dark one. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's the one that takes place at Christmas time. It's super dark. Yeah, where it, when they're fighting, you can't see shit. I guarantee you, if you go see, if you watch it on Blu-ray, it, you probably see a lot more. Yeah, I have to go back and rewatch it because uh, me and my kid, every once in a while, we go through and we're like, all right, we're watching all the Predator movies. Nice. And then we'll go all the Alien movies and even Covenant. And no. <laughs> no. Oh, you split it in. My, my buddy, my, it in. I had somebody give it to me and they're like, I know this is the only way you're ever going to own this. And I'm like, I know you're, you're a collector and you're one of them guys that's got to have everything. So they're like, here you go. Here's Covenant. And I'm like, <sighs> I guess so. It'll go in the collection. Imagine pulling it out of Paul's shelf. He's just over there. Hey, it's not what it looks like. Dude. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> like, I didn't buy that. Dude, dude, I have so many movies that are just in there for the collection. That yeah. is shit I don't want. But like, okay, um, I collect the comic book. I collect comic book movies for the most part. I did not like the Joker. Did not like that that movie. It came out. I was not a fan. And I actually I, liked it. You liked it? But I felt like they just slapped the Joker name on it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I always call it Juggalo Falling Down. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good movie if you take it and you're not looking at it as part of Batman, really. Yeah. And and when they start adding like the 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 Wayne family and stuff like that, I'm not gonna lie, I almost got if I would have been there with my wife and my kid. I would have left. I would have just been like, ah, fuck this. I'm done. Yeah. And I would have walked out. And I, but I didn't, but I own it. I own a copy of it. It's in with my Batman movie collection. I've never watched it since I got a copy of it. Given Don't it. you lie to us. You dance down the stairs every morning when you leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> I have to dance up the stairs because I got to leave to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 
No, it's a great movie for mental illness, but as far as being like, you know, canon that people remember fondly, like when it first came out, people were like, oh, yeah, his performance was incredible as a mentally ill person. Yeah. But the, but the whole Joker thing, I was like, this is fucking horse shit. No, I want, I want my Joker to be like, that's a permanent Joker face. I want, like, I don't want to know his backstory. I don't want to know what the Joker's See, back. I, I want it to like always the change and always be different. Because even if you go back to the comics, there's never been a definitive uh, answer no. for the Joker. And no, I and like I, don't want the, I don't want one. I don't no, want you don't one. want one. He'll tell you lies and give you false, you know, and I like that. Because you don't know what's real. And, and my wife kind of likes it and so does my son. They're like, well, that's the whole point of this movie is because you don't know what's in his mind and what's actually really happening. I went, yeah, I get that, but still giving him a backstory and i don't like him having a backstory don't i like him he he's the red hood he falls into the chemicals he becomes the joker in the story that's what i like yeah. well to for me that movie i would say what really got me is the cinematography and i think it's 100 percent because i am a filmmaker mm -hmm. Uh, it's because the way that movie was shot, especially knowing it's the same fucking guy that did the Hangover movies and shit. Yeah. But for me, and take it or leave it, when you open that movie, your your camera movement is pulling in while he's putting on his makeup. So we're moving into his actual world, and we're becoming a part of it, and we're there for all of this bullshit that he deals with. Then he's out there spinning the sign. They steal it, beat him up, spoilers. Um, and then when they leave him and run away, laying there, the camera pulls back so that we leave him too. And yes. that moment, I was done. I was in love with that movie because of the cinematography in the first two fucking minutes of it. See, there's movies I I, I can appreciate. I, I like how they were made. I, I think they did a great job filming them. And then I just look at the story or the subject matter and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like it's a well shot movie. That's like um, um, <laughs> fucking um, Snow White and Huntsman. Oh, yeah. yeah. My, my wife wanted to see it because she likes Chris Hemsworth. All right. I get it. Hey, good looking dude. dude. That's a good looking dude. I'm, I'm man enough to admit that. That's one good looking guy. I'll admit dude, I look just like him when you turn the lights off. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but I go, that's a well put together, well shot, pretty movie. The story's dumb as shit. Oh, the yeah. acting is horrible, but it's a well shot movie. It looks really good, but there's just there's no there's no substance behind it. Yeah, man, man, speaking of stuff, and I'm not saying this because Jake's on the show, uh, but no shit. Uh, take Worm Z, man. It, you get that same feel. You're in the film. Oh, like yeah. the way Jake has the camera moving and stuff, you're with these people. You're like, oh, fuck, what's going on, guys? What's the game plan? And you're almost running through them. Like, if there was a film that could be adapted to, uh, to like, uh, virtual reality, like the headsets, man, this would be the perfect one for that. Because uh, it really pulls you in, and and it's not like a found footage movie, and it's not like first person shooter, but it almost is. There's a lot of it, like when the way it comes, you you're about to back away from the monsters, you're about to run with the people, like you feel like you're on this ride with them, like you're right there with the this group and what's going on. Uh, that's the way it like it comes through. It's like man, it's like you're part of this journey. You gotta. You got to get the fuck out of there or the worms are going to get you too. <laughs> You're right. Because at the beginning of the movie, is I don't want to give nothing away. Um, but when the when like the six of them all come together. At the yes. Beginning, yes. You feel like you're standing right there with yes. those guys See? watching the interaction and then shit and you take off. And <laughs> Yes, that, that's what I was getting at. It's like yeah. you're in the circle and, and you're coming up with this game plan. See, you knew you knew what I was talking about. Yep, yep, yep. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, there, there's, you know, Jake can appreciate as a filmmaker, you've got to, you have to have your avatar. You have to have your your cinematic goers avatar in the movie, 
And if you can make a character that's their avatar, that they're they're following behind is one thing. But if you can actually make them feel like they're in the movie and that there's no avatar for them, but they're they're personally standing there because the way it's shot and the way it feels, I think that hits better and hits, you know, because it's fun. Because you, you literally feel like you're right there, you're interacting and, you know, it's like, fucking go, do that way. You know, you're like... <laughs> Especially the the the, the uh, I don't give a uh, when they're running through the 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 haunted house, you feel uh-huh. like you should be like go there, <laughs> like you <need> turn. <laughs> or uh, let's be honest, that scene where you see her fingers, uh, does that not make you hold your fucking breath and be like, oh my god, yes, <laughs> yes, and, and, and I don't I don't want to give nothing away either, but the the one with the feet coming to you. <laughs> uh, when you see the feet and uh, everything else, man, you have that instant feeling of, of backing up. Like you're sitting there watching, and so it's like, oh, oh, wait, I'm, 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 I'm at home. I'm at home. Calm down. No one's coming to get me. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not, what would be funny is, is that I have a couple guys who have come through the shop and they've bought every 3D movie that I've had just so they could watch them on their PlayStation VR. And I'm like, that's fucking brilliant. (laughs) Go right into the movie. I was like, that would be funny with this one. You'd be like, ah, well, you already feel like you're there. And then you'd just be really there to be interacting almost. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could take that haunt scene like that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That would be a lot. (laughs) The, the the one movie, there's one movie that I w- wish I could see in VR in 3D, and that's the original Aliens. The original Alien. Oh. Alien. Oh, oh my God. God. That would be incredible. Oh. That would be, be the best. How do y'all feel about species? Am I the only guy on the planet who just loves species? <laughs> I thought it was... I like it was species. It was, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And... I, I like the first one. Um, yeah. The rest of them are kind of burn, but no, no, we, we won't get to the other ones. Just like <laughs> when it comes to Wishmaster, there's one oh. and two. We're not talking about what happened after one and two. Well, we just we, we just watched. We were watching the crow at the shop on Saturday. We watched the crow one, and then we were watching the crow two. We got like the last ten minutes of it, and I'm like, well, we all know what happens now. We're good. <laughs> we should... Yeah, yeah, we just turn yeah. this off. <laughs> but one buddy's like he's a power ranger guy and he's like is that trini the power ranger i'm like yep this is trini the power ranger in the crow movie and he's like is she trying to? i was like yeah she's trying to get away from being a power ranger in this movie <laughs> <laughs> she went the wrong way bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah very well, it, well, what's funny is is that people are watching that that trailer for that new crow movie but i'm like that's a different crow movie they're yeah, like, well, it's still Eric. I'm like, I think they're just using the name because that looks like the dude from Crow Wild Justice. Yeah, I've had yeah, I've had so many people. I'm like, go find it. I pulled it up. I've showed it to people. I was like, I'd go show you my copy of that book, but I'm not digging, and I'm not gonna spend four years trying to dig through my comics to find a book for you. So, <laughs> well, he, he's for the kids, man. This new Crow is definitely for this new generation. Oh yeah. The, the haircut, the the things, the the whole way he looks, he, he's a Gen Zer. Yep. Uh, like, <laughs> he's, a, he's not our crow. He yeah. is a Gen Z crow. Well, the crow has such a horribly just depressing, traumatic story behind why it got created. And uh, the original yeah. comic, I mean, Jim O'Barr's fiance was murdered, like, right? Yeah. Before. Yeah, and and people are like, oh shit, that's why I was like, that's why it's a, it's a revenge because it's what he wishes he could have done. It's wish fulfillment. I I was standing uh, at uh, one. Of, I think I believe it was FrankenCon. Maybe I was standing at a convention uh, and I was wanting him to sign something. And I'm standing there and I listen to him almost tell parts of the story to mm-hmm. the people in front of me, and it fucked me up. And I couldn't meet him. I heard his story and I just like I, I don't want to bother this guy. Like, <laughs> that's like he, he told the story and it was heartbreaking. So I just turned around and I went and sat down. I never met him just because I was like, 
I, I don't even know how to like approach it now and, and say that because, uh, yeah, man, it was heavy. And I just didn't tell it. And I just turned around in the line and walked away. I was like, I don't even want to talk. No, I, can't, like, I, can't, I can't deal with that. That's a level. Yeah, I was like, that's a bit much. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. It, it, the, the funny part about it is I've met him so many times over the years. I've, I've gotten used to him. But that man smokes more than anybody I've ever met in my entire life. At least he used to. I don't know if he ever quit yeah, Well, his, his flyer picture, he's holding uh, he's holding yeah. one. In that picture we're advertising for him being at the event, he he has one. Uh, I remember, I remember they tried to kick him out of uh, Dragon Con because they're like, you can't smoke on the floor, and he's like, I'm going to smoke. So you, can, you can do whatever you're going to, do. and literally, he's like, puts that one. Out. He just one lit right off yeah. the next one, and he puts that one out, and he goes back to smoking, signing. They're like. Yeah, and pretty soon security's just like, just leave him alone. If you don't want smoke, just stay over there. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, wouldn't it be nice yeah, to have that yeah, kind of smoke somewhere? Thing. And they're like, no smoking, sir. I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just be like, fuck off, fuck off. Give them, yeah, you're giving them go the drink it on the floor. Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. Cele- I want that type of celebrity. Just do whatever I want. <laughs> Like, like, no, fuck you. I'm going to do it anyway. See, yeah. see I, I joke around. I, you guys, we're getting that weird hag you're doing it. I, I'm getting that where I, you're getting some notoriety. People are starting to know who you are. People are, you know, we're all getting that level. And uh, I was like, man, I was like, I'll be a horrible celebrity or YouTuber or whatever. And they're like, why? I was like, I don't do nothing bad anymore. I was yeah. like, I'm, I'm lazy as shit now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't party. I was like, now if you'd have got me twenty some years ago, I was a miserable bastard. Did you didn't want nothing to do it? <laughs> Partying, drinking, smoking. Do this, fuck yeah. you. Keeping it real over here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go. It, it's bad because when I'd smoke a cigar, I'd go to. Uh, um, there was this one place in Dayton. You go in the mall, and they had a. You go in a smoke shop, and then you had the big open door where you walked in this big ass humidor. And I'd always go get big cig- get me expensive cigars every once in a while. And uh, one year for my birthday, my buddies bought me like a fifty dollar cigar. Damn, that thing was like that long and like fucking like smoking a kielbasa sausage. <laughs> and I'm literally smoking this thing the entire night. We started, I don't know, like five o'clock, and we're still partying. We're we're in the in the for those people in Dayton, we're in the Oregon district at one point, and this is maybe getting ready to close down. So this is like one thirty in the morning, and I'm walking, and I got like that much of that cigar left. I'd smoked that much, and it was nice because we'd shoot pool, and people would come over and start flirting around like, yeah. And I start like a fucking chimney. Pretty soon, everybody just parts. I'm like, yeah, that's how it works. And every time I turn around, I love it when a plan comes together. I turn into fucking Hannibal. <laughs> so, end of the night, I'm I'm tired of smoking this cigar. I've been smoking it for like fucking five hours. It felt like at this point. And I'm like, all right. So I take this cigar out and I flick the end off. This homeless guy comes up. He's gonna throw that away. I'm like. Dude, it's it's been in my mouth for like six hours. He's like, I've been chewing on this. I'm like, all right, and flick, there you go, dude. And he just lights up some bitch up, and walks away, smoking it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I'm literally like, you know, chewing on it, it's sticking out of the side of my mouth. It's like, <laughs> damn, dude. Ugh. Oh god, I can't even handle smoking anymore. <laughs> no, no, you said that, and I was like, oh fuck. That's why I lit the, uh, I lit the cigar, uh, just just to keep it real, man. Keep it, just to keep it real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You said no more bad habits, and I was like, we got to keep some of them, right? <laughs> it's like people always ask me, "What's your what's your this? This is this is always iced tea, always." It's they're like, well, you know, there's a lot of caffeine in it. I'm no, <laughs> I know. I've given up so much shit in my life. Caffeine is not going to be one of them. Uh, no. <laughs> No, the, the, there's only one interview I did, which was really bad. I did uh, 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 Tales from the Podcast. 
I was on Tales from the Podcast, and they and Ron and them called me at the worst time to do this interview. And you just see me pull up the bottle of like I think it was like a bottle of uh, bourbon, uh, some aged no, it was aged scotch. And I just got this aged bottle of scotch that I'm sipping on. And I'm like, you guys called me at the wrong time. I was working on some new shows, <laughs> and they were like, "Looks like you're drinking." I was like, "That's where I get the inspiration." <laughs> I, I did I did an interview with my one buddy and uh, he's like, Oh, how long are we go interview for? I was like, Oh, about an hour, about an hour or so. And he's like, Oh, cool, cool. So literally I go over, I get a gummy. I eat a gummy because it takes about an hour for it to kick in on me. Oh shit. And we're sitting there talking and talking and talking and talking. We keep going and going and going. So literally it's like an hour and a half at this point, and I feel it kicking in. And we go three hours almost. Holy and shit. I'm like, oh man, I'm high as hell. I'm like, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, you're gonna be able to tell because my eyes are gonna be like bugged out or something like that. So literally, I went back and watched it, and I'm like, oh good, I don't like I'm fucked up to the entire. And I even asked Dave like later on, I'm like, dude, did I act weird when we did that show? And he's like, no, nah, man, we're just having fun. I'm like, dude, I was like, <laughs> see, and the worst part about it, I talk about getting out of getting out of bad habits. I, I do. I discovered edibles relatively recently, last year, and uh, they are one of the few things because um, I don't sleep for shit, and uh, my knees and my back always hurts. And mm -hmm. if I take one, I don't. I don't do it to get high. I don't do it to get. I do it to like mellow myself out, so my knees don't hurt, my back don't hurt, and to help myself sleep. And. I, I, I'm as bad because I'm always, I was one of them guys like, oh, I'm gonna fucking smoke weed, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm like, you need to do this. This is how you need to fucking chill the fuck out. <laughs> as I, and I was, as I said, I was like, I've almost gotten into fist fights with my best friend because we were drinking. I have never gotten into, almost gotten into a fight because somebody was high. No. Like, Dude, that's no. all right. <laughs> Just like, no, I, I, I don't smoke, man. But the last time I did, it's because I'm standing there talking to Sabu, and he's talking to me about a, a project he was wanting to work on and was asking if I could be a part of it. And I'm just chit-chatting with him. He's like, come outside with me. We go outside, and we're right outside this hotel. And he just lights up a joint, and he hands it to me. And I don't smoke, but considering he is who he is, I didn't want to say no. I want to smoke this with him. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there, and I'm like, Oh, by the way, that's really illegal here. And he's like, fuck, why didn't you tell me? I'm standing right outside the door. I was like, it's you, dude. Nobody's going to tell you no. <laughs> like, I was like, I didn't. I don't even smoke this shit, but I wasn't going to say no to you. Like, <laughs> Back when, when uh, Vinny Paul was still alive, we were at a Hell Yeah concert, and we're all hanging out outside. And there's the band, except for Chad. He's in the bus, and they're all sitting there, and they're like, and they're handing it, and I'm like, <laughs> they're like i was like that's the closest i ever come to smoking weed with with fucking Tiffany. yeah <laughs> just uh, oh that's awesome yeah. well, one is, oh, throw I, it over I, your I, shoulder i was, I was <laughs> gonna be that guy going, <laughs> yeah. oh that's what i, I did completely sad oh man i can't i can't smoke smoke nothing i've tried and i either cough or, or but one gummy one edible and it works great i love it so, do we? I do, do we know what time it is? Do we know what time it is? Six fifty-three. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, we got. We got Sorry, to, I'm watching. I've been blowing. I've been blowing this one meeting off. Uh, I missed the last one and everything else. It's, it's Paul is for the Monster Channel. I, I do not want to miss this thing again. Uh, they canceled the last one because I missed it. So I'm gonna look like a real fucking dickhead if you I miss another again. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love those guys. We got to give it up for the Monster Channel. You can see Captain Cartoon on there. You can also see on my show all of Jake's work. Uh, <laughs> every Agricor, steal it, do. take it over to the Monster Channel for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, what are you going to say, Jake? I was going to say, with y'all's whole conversation here about weed and edibles and shit. And Tony's going to hate me for leading this because this is a Tony story, but I'm going to oh, start it. <laughs> As about two years ago, I get a text 
that Tony said, I fucked up. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he said, my wife got a nerd's rope. <laughs> I just thought it was candy. Dude, I, it was a long one, like a, yeah. a huge nerd rope. And me being the candy person I am, I was like, that's a fucking nerd rope. Fuck these kids. I'm eating it. <laughs> Ate the whole thing. Did not know that it was like 2,000 milligrams of of THC straight from California. So when I say I was high, that is an understatement. I was uber high. I, <laughs> I'm panicking. Um, I text Jake. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I fucked up. I need someone to talk to. Like, I'm tripping balls right now. <laughs> oh, don't leave out the shower. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, what did I say that, what time it was? Yeah. That's <laughs> been a great show. You got, <laughs> you got 25, you got 35 minutes, man. You need yeah. time. <laughs> I don't know oh, what the fuck God. you wanted me to do. I was still in Texas at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like 1300 miles bro mm. when you're high it doesn't matter <laughs> no no <laughs> no. <laughs> no it's like it don't matter if you're 25 hours away <laughs> no man there, there's a crying game shower involved <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was bad and I'm just I, 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 I'm getting text the whole step of the way, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> every bit of I, uh, Jake, even though Jake was, it was so many hours away, I was like, dude, I need you to hold my hand through this. <laughs> <laughs> I completely fucking did. Uh, well, we made it through it. Um, so now I read everything. <laughs> I put on the glasses. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You're like, hold okay. on a second. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's me now. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, we went up. I had never done the gummies at this point. My buddy, we go up to Michigan. We're going up through some deathmatch wrestling. Literally, the dispensary is 10 minutes away from where we're at wrestling. <clears throat> and he's always one of the ones who can get you, can get you high. I was like, dude, I've tried to smoke weed. Nothing's happened. So I just always blew it off and never, never thought nothing about it. So he goes, go ahead and pick something off that wall. I'll buy it for you. I was like, all right, give me some ap sour apple gummies. Give me, give me some of them. Like, all right. He goes, do half. And the last time he told me to do half, he gave me a bag of Skittles. He goes, just eat, eat like a half of one or like one. So I ate one, nothing happened. Ate two, nothing happened. Ate the fucking bag, nothing happened. So I'm like, all right. And I found out those are just for microdosing. Those are like one milligram a piece. Like the whole entire bag is only, was only like 10. Oh. And um, so I'm like, all right. So I go home. I get those. Wife's down here. We're hanging out, watching a movie. And um, she's like, well, okay, let's try them. So I cut one in half. I eat it. Fucking hour later, nothing. Nothing. Not feeling anything. So I'm like, fuck this. So I grab another full one. Throw oh, it in. Wow. Ate it. Nothing. Hour later, I'm still fine. I'm like, screw it. So I had that half of one. Chucked it in. And uh, then it's about it's about 2, 2.30 in the morning. I'm sitting over on the couch. And all of a sudden, it just feels like somebody took a nice warm blanket and just laid it on top of me. And I'm like, ah, that's what it feels like. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like chilling out. I'm like, all right, all right. So... About an hour later, I finally get up. I go upstairs and go to bed. I wake up the next morning and I'm like, oh man, something's not right. I go down, I take my shower, get it, get it, get it going. I go and I eat breakfast and stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is not working. This is not working. <laughs> I go up to Tina, I'm like, oh, I fucked up. Oh, I fucked up bad. And she's like, what's the matter? I was like, oh, I'm still high as shit. <laughs> she's like, what? And I was like, she's like, it's the whole entire night. It's like, oh, I'm fucked up. I was like, I am... and now my wife will not leave me alone on that one. She's like, I still remember that morning. You come in like, your eyes are all bright. You're like, yeah, I, I messed up bad. I'm, I'm, I'm still high. Why does this last 13 hours? <laughs> She's one of the people that she can eat one, go to bed. She can wake up an hour later and it's done. 
I can go. I'll eat. I usually eat one about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. That helps me go to bed about two. Gets me nice, good, mellow, knocks me out. Sometimes I'll turn something on YouTube. I watch one of them fucking uh, um, uh, ones where they make the, the the noise, the the ambient noise or the music and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Help, it helps <laughs> shut the brain down. And it's nice because I found those. Some of them work really good at, I have a busy brain. It's always going high mile an hour. And it just shuts the brain down. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay, cool. This works. Um, but I can go go upstairs, go to bed. If I wake up about four, five o'clock in the morning, I can still be a little buzzy. But by the time I get up eight, nine o'clock, I'm fine. And uh, now I got that shit set. I got, I, I'm like fucking mathematician. I'm like, oh, if I take I'm not this, waking up like this. And I got, again. <laughs> I do the math. I'm like, if I take it now. And I, <laughs> although the other day I did, I got, I got back from Detroit at like two o'clock in the morning, well after I should take it. But I needed to come down because I, we, we'd been to the show. We'd been to a concert. We had a blast and I still pumped. And I'm like, I got, I got to fuck come down. I got, I got to come down. So I ate one at like two, two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, God, I hope I'm still not high when I get up. <laughs> and uh, then I got up, I was fine. But oh shit, that was that was a that was a hellacious adventure. Did I tell you about that shit? About me getting banned from IHOP in uh, Woodhaven, Michigan? Yes, I know the story. <laughs> uh and then everybody's asking me, what were you? Were you drinking? I'm like, no, I don't drink no more. I was like, I was uh, <laughs> it was not my fault. I was not in error. It was the management at the IHOP. <laughs> but it gets better. Monday, during the eclipse, after the eclipse happened here, we were right in the path. <clears throat> so we had a lot of people coming from all over. We had people from Tennessee up here. Uh, we had some people from up in Michigan and stuff in our area. And they all come to the shop because they're like, oh, we look for these shops. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm sitting there talking to these these two at the end of the night. And uh, I'm like, oh, you know, where are you from? They're like, oh, we're from up by up past Detroit. And I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, you know where this at? And we're like, we end up, you know, talking about places we both knew. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I was like, I'm not. I was like, I got booted out of the fucking IHOP in, Bo in Woodhaven, Michigan. And they're like, oh, fuck, I know that place. You're not missing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck that guy. I'm like, yes, cool. Fuck that guy. Yeah, just fucking <laughs> random people I meet at the shop knew exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> That's funny. Oh shit! You gotta love Michigan, though. Gotta oh. love it. Yeah, 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 in Detroit, man. Uh, I guess like I, I, I guess I do well. Like the worse the town is, the more they really enjoy like hack. Like, like I go to Detroit and everybody's like, yeah, like at home, everybody's like, oh, dude, it's good to see you. Uh, they're not buying them, but it's like I go to Atlanta and they're like, fuck oh, yeah, dude, what's up? Like, it, it, or Memphis, like if it's a really, just really bad town and you think it's dangerous, I probably like it because they're extra nice to me. They're like, oh, this guy's like us. He, he, he can be here. <laughs> it, it's cool when you find them. Like I was at a, a convention and. I was doing a uh, Haunted Scream Expo like a year and a half ago because I didn't miss it last year, but we went the year before. And I'm in there, and all of a sudden this guy's sitting there, and he's talking to me, and he's I had the TV on, and it, one of my shows was on. He looks at the show. He looks at me. He looks back at the show. looks at me. He goes, fuck your Captain Cartoon. I went, yeah, yeah, I am. He goes, fuck, I watch you every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got to do it. I got to use the gimmick name to tell people. I'll tell them, I'm like, well, Paul Lee. They're like, huh? I'm like, fucking Paul, dude. They're like, I don't know who you're talking about. What, Captain Cartoon? They're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, we know that, dude. <laughs> then they know who the fuck you are. <laughs> that's like, that's like, where's your gimmick? I'm like, right here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, Captain Cartoon or Masada. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it's, it's weird. I had, a, um, we were at, down in Kentucky. I took my wife to go see Stevie Nicks a while back. And I'm literally standing outside the restroom while she goes in. And all of a sudden you're, oh! And I'm like, what the fuck? I am literally three hours from my home base. <laughs> I was like, people knew who I was all the way down in Louisville, Kentucky. Damn. Nice. Dude, nobody knows who I am unless I'm wearing a jacket. No they shit. They've seen this recently. <laughs> 
Although, although if I if I remove the hat and then people see I'm like fucking going bald and shit, I'm like I'm getting a John Cena hair. <laughs> oh, me too, dude. Me too. It's still thick on the sides, but up top is ah. good. Oh, somebody yeah. asked me to like, is that why you wear a hat? I was like, no, dude, I've wore a hat since I was like ten. I was like, this is just part of my fucking. No, you see pictures of me, and it always looks like I have a the spot on the, my head. There is no spot. It's the glare coming off my actual head where it's all thinning on top. Jake's like, like the shaved head hair. thing. I used to have the long <laughs> hair, man. The, I used to have long hair, the shaved head thing now. That, that is not like a gimmick. That is, uh, <laughs> I have to do that. It looks, looks, it looks a lot better, man. See, I, right I, now I, I'm unshaved. I, I had to talk. I had to talk shit to one of my good friends years ago because he's like, "Oh, fuck, you're going bald." And at the time, I wasn't going bald yet. He was like, "You always wear a hat." I'm like, "No, I always wear a hat because I just always wear a hat." I was like, "No, I got a full head of hair and fucked with my hair." And then fucking like a year later, my hair started falling out. <laughs> <laughs> he cursed you, bro. <laughs> I, as I, as I do to my youngest son all the time, he goes, "Dad, you're bald." Because he, he is he has autism, so he has like no filter, no yeah. whatsoever. And I'm like, yeah, it's like 13 years ago it started falling out. <laughs> Teen is like, stop doing that. It's like he don't fucking care. <laughs> like he has a yeah. blast. He don't give a shit. I can remember the day it started. <laughs> Tell them their birthday. <laughs> yeah. What was real bad is is my my older boys were sitting there and they're like, well, you used to have hair. I saw a short picture of me legitimately holding my my oldest biological son when he was a baby like he was like fresh out of the fresh from the hospital and i have a thick ponytail jet black hair my my must everything's jet black because even at that point because it came in black and i'm like sitting there like see dad had hair at <laughs> <laughs> same same i look like johnny ramon uh for years like it, it was funny i, I just seen uh, uh uh jake's youngest son and I'm looking at him, and he's got the glasses in his hair. And I'm like, I really wanted to go find an old picture of me and be like, dude, <laughs> that was the same style haircut that I kept for years with my glasses. And then my oldest is 15, and he's just got this wild hair, man. Like, he, he thinks he washes it, and then he's like, messes it all up. I'm like, dude, the mess he looks not cool anymore when it's past your shoulders. Like, you really need to brush. <laughs> like, well, you really need to run this through a my, couple my, times. <laughs> my son Joe was that way for a while. He started getting a ginormous tangle in the back of his head. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, just, just, so he had to cut all of his hair off. Now it's getting long again. But now it's funny because I ran in somebody I hadn't seen since high school, just 30 some years ago. <clears throat> They're like, yeah, I spotted you walking down the street the other day. And I'm like, fucking Paul hasn't aged a day. And then I realized that's your kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, Paul has aged. I was like, actually, I'm aging pretty well. I was like, most people don't know I'm 50, but they're like, yeah, until the gray starts poking through real bad. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's that's why I won't grow the beard, man. That's why I always save it off. Because now, now when it gets longer, it gets... It all it is starting to turn all gray. So I'm like, I, I wish it was still red. <laughs> my my my, my ongoing red. joke is is that my eventual goal is to turn into a villain from a D and D adventure. So I'm gonna have long <laughs> hair, but the bald spot, and a ginormous beard, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> look like the wizard. Have the give me a big crystal ball and a staff. <laughs> Fuck yeah! You've made it this far. <laughs> you will find. <laughs> <laughs> Like Wait till people walk into the gas station and be like, welcome, and start delivering the, the side quest shit to them. <laughs> Just to fuck with them. <laughs> You've made it this far. You must go this way. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Back down to aisle seven. <laughs> Yo, so that just reminded me, last weekend when we had the, the market thing that we went to, yeah. well, my daughter decided she wanted to go with me to help. Well, because it's a horror movie, she decided to dress out. She has fake blood on and all kinds of shit. Well, on the way, we decided to stop at McDonald's. <laughs> and as we go to walk in, I look at her. I was like, you know, it's funny. I know the context, but none of these people are going to so we walk in. Everybody's giving my daughter these crazy looks. She's 16. <laughs> 
<laughs> we sit down and there's these two little girls that come walking in and I just hear this little voice freak out. What is that? <laughs> 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 I, I did something similar i was in a movie and in the movie i play a um i am murder cult rapist number two oh, nice. <laughs> so i have this big gash across my head i got this you know all this shit and i end up getting shot in the head so i have a bullet hole and i have shit in my my hair and um i, I cleaned like some of it off i tried to clean because it was all sticky I'm like trying to clean the shit out of my hair, but I'm trying to get, I'm like, all right, I'll just get this shit off when I get home so I can like use like mineral oil and stuff. Right. And um, my wife's driving back. We're 10 minutes away from home. She's like, are you getting hungry? Cause I'd already been up at this point. I'd been up like 36 hours. Oh shit. Cause I went directly. I worked a third shift job, got off in the morning, drove like an hour and a half away, filmed the movie all day. Then drove back that evening. Had to stop it, you know, but I still had to stop at the shop and and because I had my kids running it that day. And I get there and she's like, "Well, you want to stop at Wendy's?" I'm like, "I don't really want to stop at Wendy's, but I'm 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 hungry. I need something." We roll up the Wendy's and I'm driving, <laughs> and I forget I have all this shit still in my face. So I roll up and I go to look and I look at the girl like this. She's like, "Oh my god!" And I'm like, "Oh shit! I'm sorry. I'm in a movie." <laughs> And nice. I, I think I get it all off. I wash myself so good. I get in the shower and I crash finally. It's like 40 hours of being up. I'm I'm I literally look like I'm dead because I, I not only do I have the fucking rings under my eyes, I actually have rings under my eyes. And uh <laughs> I'm sitting there and I go to sleep <laughs> and I wake up and you can still see my face <laughs> from the makeup I could not get off <laughs> on my pillow. And I'm like, fuck, not gonna wash. <laughs> <laughs> so literally i'm like in my wife's fucking these little like makeup removal things i'm like yep. yeah. Get <laughs> yeah i actually keep those in my kit my wife showed me those oh yeah. yes and, and then yes. then then i get then we get off then i get up and this is when i was, was still drinking we decided and we went to a bar to go see a band play and i'm still like <laughs> I'm fucking out because i'd only slept for like two hours and everybody's like, "Are you all right?" No, no. no. And they're like, and I hold up my phone. I'm like, "This is what I look like, you know, ten hours ago." And they're like, "Oh my god, what were you?" It's like this is a movie. Yeah. <laughs> then I had to oh. go. What, what movie were you? I was like, "Well, I was in a movie called Church of the Eyes, and I am murder cult rapist number two. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I've had him walk into the Waffle House three in the morning and the waitress is like oh my god were you just in a car wreck and i'm like no barbed wire match right down the road <laughs> That's and they I got mad at me that they were gonna stab me in the crowd and i snuck out in the trunk uh do you kind of do you care if i wash this off in the bathroom and just feel bleeding <laughs> like just so the people didn't maul and kill me in the parking lot i'm sneaking out and pulling up at a waffle house just walking in bleeding just i need i need a bathroom <laughs> Well, it's a waffle me. house. They should be. They should be used to that. I know, right? Yeah, I'm they, like, uh, some are like, oh fuck, yeah, have a seat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they, they walk in, just going up, set up at the bar. All right, we're good. <laughs> oh, boys, I, uh, unfortunately, I do. I do have to dip out. I do All have right. to dip out. Well, uh, love you guys. Uh, check out Captain Cartoon on the Monster Channel, please. Go buy yourself a copy of Tapeworm Z. It will be your favorite movie, just like it is mine. Uh, man, I've had a blast, you guys. I don't want to. I don't want to go, but I, I, I can't miss this meeting again. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do a big <laughs> one, and we're just gonna do one where we can just a lot as Sunday afternoon. And just yes, fucking bullshit. <laughs> we cover the world. Like we we will solve these problems. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, that, we, we need to be like the episode of y'all watch Always Sunny. We'll come together and it goes the gang solves world hunger. Or something like yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but guys, it's been a pleasure. I, I got to dip out. All right, man. We'll tell everybody over at the Monster Channel that Captain Cartoon said hello. <laughs> I will, absolutely. Jake, it's always a pleasure, brother. Yep. yep. And now, you and now you're going to leave and we get to talk shit about you for <laughs> Yep. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, Hack. Man, take care. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yep. Last one here. First one out.
There you go. Yep, yep. Uh, man. So so how did you guys get to together? How did you how did you and Hack come to become friends, given the fact you guys were thirteen hundred miles? Yeah. So we have a friend and uh, a Facebook friend in common, Eric Exton. He's a filmmaker in Oklahoma. Um, me and Eric became friends and I ended up kind of helping him on a project. And then he hits me up one day. He's like, Hey, I got this dude that follows me that he wants to know if he can play one of your uh, shorts. It was the killer sandwich. And he's like, uh, this guy wants to know if he can play one. He's got a TV show. So I don't know. I was like, fuck it. Tell him sure. So Tony ends up hitting me up a couple weeks later and it was him. And uh, he's like, hey, dude, I just wanted to fucking hit you up. Thanks for letting me play that. Uh, I was looking at your stuff. Do you mind if I play something else? I'm like, fuck, dude, play whatever you want. I don't mind, man. It's fucking advertising for me. And, I mean, if it's helping you, cool. Well, end up just fucking chatting back and forth. Now the fucker's played everything I've ever made on his fucking show. <laughs> to the point that, uh, what, uh, this season of his show if you actually watch his show, I did the first episode. Yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, I did that still in Texas, and we've just we just became good friends. And I was already planning on moving here. He lives like an hour away. Yeah, and that's only because he lives in the fucking boonies, bro. Like he, nowhere. Like to go to the grocery store, he has to drive forty five miles or forty five minutes. It's terrible where he lives, bro. And I like country, but. Damn, bro, he's way too far, dude. I, I lived, I lived out in the country when I was in through high school. So at your worst time that you could possibly live out in the country, I lived out in the country from fourteen to twenty. I lived. It was nine miles to one town or nine miles to the next town. <laughs> and, and when you have no car, or you, you, I had a bicycle. When I was fourteen, I would get on my bicycle ride the 10 miles into town that's just to get to town that's yeah. not including to to go to my friend's house or something and then i lived you know in a completely different school district than some of my buddies so i would get the, to the next and then they'd still be in school and i'm like all right so i just scoot on down the road one day i drove i rode my bicycle holy shit it doesn't do nothing good for you, but I drove from all the way from Sydney to Dayton in a day and back. And that's Sydney to, to pick was probably 40 minutes by car. Yeah, and I rode yeah. that shit on a bicycle <laughs> and uh, got all the way down there, hung out down there, got my bicycle and rode my happy ass all the way back home. <laughs> Yeah, our thing back home was walking everywhere. We didn't have bikes. They got stolen constantly. So we just fucking, we walked. And I mean, Odessa was big, dude. You know, like, oh, we yeah. were hours and hours just to go bullshit with somebody for 20 minutes and then walk hours and hours back. Looking back, I'm like, what the fuck were we doing? <laughs> great, you had great legs. You had a lot of <laughs> leg day. It was always leg day. <laughs> Yeah, and we'd be we'd be walking, of course, having to travel so far, we'd be walking after dark. Cops always stopped us because, you know, we were the little hood kids. We were poor, and we all had long hair and looked like shit. And uh, they'd pull us over and be like, well, uh, we heard there was a break-in over here. Well, what the fuck are you bugging us for? Whoa, you're out past dark. So is everybody else. <laughs> you're not fucking with them, bro. Shit. Uh, okay, I, I, I gotta tell you a story. This I was an adult at this point. We lived in this little town called Tip City. It used to be called Cloroxville because it was white. <laughs> and uh, we we lived there for, I don't know, like 10 months or so. We lived there almost a year. And uh, I used to work, matter of fact, this whole thing I do now, group therapy started out as a public access channel at the local Tip City TV station. It was two blocks away from my apartment. So literally, I would go, became friends with the guy who ran the studio. And he's like, if I'm here, you can come in and edit. So I'm like, sweet. And he was, I worked second slash third shift. I was manager at a hotel at the time. 
So he's like, if I'm here, have at it. Come in, edit. I don't care. You know, if I tell you I need to leave, I'll let you know. And then you can stop. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he was a night owl too. So he would, he would literally wouldn't be there during the day for the most part. He'd be there all night long. And he was also a movie maker. So he, he used all the editing shit back when it was all VHS and stuff. And he edited at the editing bay. So it's two, three o'clock in the morning. I finished up. I leave. I'm walking the two blocks back to my house. I have a bag full of VHS tapes because it's what you had to edit back then in 2000, 2001. And um, so I'm walking with my VHS tapes and um, all of a sudden, woo, cop pulls inside me. And I'm like, the fuck's going on? I'm thinking something's going on and I just happen to be walking through. Right. Cop gets out and he's like, um, what y'all here doing? He's like, well, I'm walking home. He's a little late, isn't it? I'm like, well, I'm an adult, so no. Um, and he's like, well, well, wh wh why are you out here? I'm like, I'm walking from the TV station to my apartment. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure you are. And I'm like, what's in the bag? I'm like, VHS tapes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And he goes, uh, and by this time, a second cop car has showed up. So literally there's two cop cars parked and I'm just standing there with a bag full of VHS tapes. And these cops are just, you know, mean mugging me and stuff like that. And he's like, uh, uh, why don't you go back and check and make sure your story comes out right? I'm like, the fuck you mean story comes out right? He walks back to the TV station. My buddy's still there. And he comes back. He goes, well, you need to get home. I'm like, well, I, I don't because I'm an adult. And I'm like, I, I don't, there's no curfew for adults. I know this town's small and, the, the, you know, they roll up the sidewalks at like eight o'clock at night. But I'm allowed to be out. I'm not, this isn't like, you know, martial law. I'm not, I'm not under house arrest or anything like that. But I, I joke around, I don't, I joke around about it, but I'm not exaggerating. I'm probably under exaggerating this. Um, I get pulled over three times a week living in that town because I, one is I get it. My father was a mechanic, so I did drive different cars a lot and I did work second slash third shift. So I was either coming home after 11 or getting ready to go to work to be at work at 11. So I was being out at late at night, but yet again, adult, yeah. you're allowed to do that. And, uh, I would get pulled over and, and, uh, I'd have them follow me forever. I would have, and everybody's like, well, you, you should have been doing nothing wrong. I didn't do shit wrong outside of being out at night. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, man, it was bad because I remember the one night I finally got a day off. I'm like, all right. The bar was literally like half a block away from our apartment. So we walked in the bar. We sat down. Me and my wife were like, we get our first drink. We go to drink the second drink. And they're like, last call. And I'm like, fuck you mean last call? It's like 10. What the hell? <laughs> well, yeah, bar closed at like 1030. And I'm like, oh, wow. what the fuck kind of bar is this? <laughs> And everybody's like, oh, if you want to go to the bar, you got to go to the one down the road that stays open till like, you know, two in the morning. I'm like, that seems far. <laughs> <laughs> we end up going down there. We end up walking and then hanging out at that bar until two. And then we walked back to our apartment. He's like, hey, no kids. I had the day off. I was like, yeah. No, nope. Said he was going to shit on that. <laughs> but yeah. They, they did not want to hear that I'm like, well, there's no curfews and I'm an adult, so I'm allowed to be out after midnight, you know? Yeah, they're ridiculous sometimes. But uh, I do not miss living in that town. I think my wife does a little bit because she likes, like, the quaintness of it. But yet again, there's nothing in this town. Like, yeah. nothing. There There's no movie theater. There, I think there was a video store at the time when we lived there. But it was literally, like, tiny. Like, I have a better movie selection than they had uh, <laughs> at that time. Uh, um, there was two grocery stores, one little tiny, like, little, little tiny one, and then one bigger one, and that was still even small. And, um, oh, man, it, it I, I, I did not like, I like, my small town is still small, but at least there's a movie theater there's places to go there's things 
not a whole lot to do, but there is things you can do if necessary. Yeah, that's living in Knoxville, dude. There's everything, but I don't like living in the city. Like, I like to be right outside. Uh, like, once it turns country, that's where I like to be. Yeah. I don't like to be like where Tony is, but I also don't want to be like right now, dude. Like I said, we just moved here. So the only place we could find is right. It, like, you couldn't be more city than where I live. It is just. It's horrible. Um, so, I'm not a big city guy either. I like my small town. I live, you know, I'm not, I am, I guess, on top of people. I have neighbors on either side that I don't much care for. But but at least I'm not in a big city. I, I worked in Dayton for years, and that was just a huge pain in the ass. And Dayton's not that big. So I couldn't imagine being in a big-ass city and have to live downtown or live in town. It's what at rush time, like five o'clock, dude. You can't get anywhere over here. It's insane. But being from Texas, you know, Gatlinburg, all that shit's like 30 miles. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh, it's way over there. I'm like, I used to have to drive further than that to go to the fucking grocery store, bud. <laughs> because Texas, huge cities, and then the next huge city is like fucking go through the desert. Uh, <laughs> then there's another city. Then you get to that city, and you go to another big city. You go through the desert. <laughs> yes. I I remember being a kid going from Dallas Fort Worth to San Antonio, and uh, for the first time, and it's just like you felt like it felt like it was longer for me to drive or for us to ride from there to there than it was from Ohio to Texas because you pass stuff. You're driving. There's, there's, yeah. in, you know, there, but yeah, you're out in the middle of freaking nowhere at that point. Yeah. And where, where I'm from is six hours West of Dallas. Jeez. So yeah, but still six more hours to El Paso. <laughs> See, that, that's, people don't understand how big Texas is. If I drive six hours west, I'm in fucking, I'm in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I am yeah. three states away at that point. If, if I drive, drive 70 miles an hour from El Paso to Texarkana, that's just west to east. It's 19 hours. And you never leave the fucking state, bud. Dude, I can I can leave here and be to Dallas in sixteen hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. literally coming here. Over half of the trip is still in Texas, and I live at the far end of Tennessee. <laughs> so, so I, I shit. To, my wife and I went to New Orleans, and that's thirteen hours. So we drove from Ohio all the way down to New Orleans in thirteen hours. Yeah, You're, bro. From here to home, what is 20, 23 or 25 hours? Mm, God damn. Yeah. And when we moved, we were in a U-Haul. So guess what? It was way longer. It took us three days to get here. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my crap. That's too fucking far. Yeah. And and the, the, the funny part about it, you talk about Texarkana, um, like when I was a kid, uh, one of the first horror movies I ever saw was The Town That Dreaded Sundown, and then probably um, The Legend of Boggy Creek. And uh, my parents, I'm like five, because I know, because I was playing with, I, I can remember, because I was playing with my Star Wars figures in the motorhome as we're driving through Texarkana. And my parents looked at me and they're like, hey, remember that movie, The Town That Dreaded Sundown? And, you know, five year old me is like, yeah. And they're like, this is where it happened. They never <laughs> caught the guy. And I'm like, <laughs> literally, I'm in my, I'm in the bunk playing with my Star Wars guys. Like, the bag of the guy's going to get me. I'm like, hi, oh, man. Yeah. I still bring that up to my mom and dad to this day. I'm like, you screwed with me so bad when I was a little kid. <laughs> that is hilarious. It's like, literally, my kids, when they were little, I took them to conventions and I'm like, see that guy over there? And they're like, yeah, that's Jason. He's just a dude. You know, I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they went up and met him and stuff. And now, now my kids never had any fear of any of that stuff. I'm like, I got the exact opposite. I'm like, this is where they made it. The yeah. killer's still here. And I'm like, 
Yeah, my kids don't have those issues because I do the effects and everything. Yeah, so they're there for all that shit. Oh, yeah. yeah, see, my my parents were the ones that you know. I I, I forget. I, I asked you. I was like, I can't remember how old you are, but uh, you know, we didn't really have the exposure on until I was I want to say junior high before we started really seeing how they made horror movies. And when I when I hit that age, I realized how cool it was, and I became a massive horror fan, like the sixth grade. And uh, but but before that, you just you know there were horror movies. That that's what they were. You know, there was no you know you didn't know how the special effects were done. You didn't know what the monster was. You know, you know it was just you're just like, and then especially you know, Town Dread Sundown actually happened, and yeah. and so. Yeah, five years old, trauma traumatized for a good decade. So, <laughs> but better than my my one cousin and his his cousin on his other side. Um, we watch. We would watch the movie. One of our favorite movies to watch was Alligator. Remember Alligator with Robert yeah. Forrester? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But they flush it down the toilet. We got it so his little cousin would go to the bathroom. <laughs> Because he's afraid the alligators gonna come out of the toilet, <laughs> and all of a sudden his mom's like, "Why is Jason peeing in his bed?" All of a sudden we're just like, <laughs> "We know." <why." laughs> but we double featured it, man. We watched alligator like ghoulies on the same day, so literally an alligator come out of the toilet or a little. Oh mom, yeah, and then ghoulies and would not go to the bathroom. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> Now, now I feel bad about it as an adult. I'm like, oh, man, we screwed that little kid up, man. Why did we do that? <laughs> Builds character. Builds character, yeah. <laughs> now you know, you little shit. Ah, fucking monsters aren't real. <laughs> yeah. They're puppets, bud. Come on. Then you just look at them and go, the real monsters are people. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh man, it's it's bad because like my kids, my kids grew up knowing exactly because I showed them like how stuff was made. I introduced them to like horror movie actors that I'd met at conventions, and they 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 never feared. And my kids actually had no, didn't give two shits about horror until actually relatively recently. And my, now my kids are starting to get into it as adults, and I'm like, well, okay, we're good, we're good, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, because they're surrounded by it. Yeah, yeah. And it was the it was the same thing with my oldest son because before I did movies I was a guitarist. Mm -hmm. uh, with arthritis is what stopped that. Yeah, I was a death metal guitarist, so I actually got to play shows with a lot of bands that I listened to, like Decrepit Birth, Origin, people of that caliber. Mm -hmm. And uh, my oldest son, when he turned twelve, he got to go to his first show, which was Origin and Decrepit Birth. Well, Bill Robinson from Decrepit Birth found out it was his first show, gave him a fucking t-shirt, handed it to him himself. The kid's like, whatever, I don't, I don't fucking care. Well, now that he's fucking 21, he's like, that is the coolest experience, and I had no fucking idea. I'm like, yeah, you dick. <laughs> it, well, that's like... Uh, um of a buddy of mine he was in he was in a he was in a death metal band and he toured um did a couple shows with deicide oh. fucking glenn is like the most intense dude i've ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> i'll bet i was like i kind of see that yeah yeah he's known for that though yeah i mean I, I i i can say the kind of the same thing as like literally the first concert i ever went to is this gonna sound dumb first concert i've ever been to i was 12 maybe my parent my mom took me i've seen what i saw willie nelson oh nice and then i'm like ah, fuck, I, I went and see willie no no i'm like fuck yeah well my first shows like, <laughs> yeah. like, no i'm proud of it but when i was a kid i was like i was into you know that's when i started getting into metal so i was kind of in the hair metal phase at that point starting to get mm -hmm. into like the punk metal uh, I was starting to find uh, the Ramones and the Misfits around that time, and then shortly thereafter, I found Thrash and Death. But yeah, I was like, "Oh yeah!" Now I'm like, and then now I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." Back on being a kid, my parents took me to concerts, and I didn't give a shit. I saw Joan Jett, fucking Cheap Trick, fucking yep. Horror, ZZ Top, ZZ Top's from not too far from where I'm from. 
that I got to see all of these great bands of the time and didn't give two shits about it. Yeah, same same way with my 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 son Joe. My wife took and uh, I was stuck working, but there was uh, Joan Jett was playing here in Columbus, and um, she's like, "Oh, you want to go?" And Joe's like, "Yeah, sure." He went with my wife, and he's like, "Okay, I know who this is. I know who this is." You know, and then it kicks in, and now he's kind of proud of it. He didn't have no intention. He's like, oh, "Whatever." Um, but I, I, one of the the coolest ones, I, I took him to go see Slayer on our farewell tour. Oh, oh, and it's so funny because we're sitting there and uh, this is like the fifth time I'd seen Slayer and uh, first big metal show big you know outside four bands it's um, no five it was mass it was a uh, testament we got there right as testament finished up their last song which I still say I've never seen testament even though I've seen them like this much it was testament behemoth Anthrax, Lamb of God, Slayer. And uh, Joe and me, I'm big. I love Anthrax. He likes Anthrax. But he's like, yeah. he started hearing the songs live. He's like, oh, yeah. And he started getting into it. But Slayer, we're sitting there and I'm like, oh, man, it was still daylight out. I'm like, man, I can't see Slayer taking the stage while it's still light out. Because, man, they're yeah. a stage show. And I'm watching and it's it's taking its time. And I can see the sun going down. And it just goes over the horizon. It disappears. And all of a sudden, the music kicks on. It's like, and we're like, he's like, and all of a sudden, whoa, fire shoots up from underneath the stage. He's like, what the hell? And he gets into it, and he's like, he fucking loves it. And especially when they do a war ensemble, they have flamethrowers. Like, so it's like firing like a machine gun. And he's like, I was like, oh, I wish you could have been there. The first time I got to see Slayer was still when they did the finale was Rain and Blood when it would rain blood down. Mm. So literally, I'm up there, guardrail, you know, double fisting it, like four foot away from the stage. And I'm sitting there going, okay, they haven't played Rain and Blood. Everything goes off stage. And then the, the thunder starts hitting and it's and then they come walking out like, and uh, and uh, they're up there playing, and all of a sudden it starts. You see the the red streaming down their face, and they're and it just keeps going, and the blood starts pouring down. I'm like, this is the most awesome thing ever. <laughs> I'm 17, is the yeah, and and then like, then I'm in my brain when I get home. I'm like, how did they play? Because it's wet. You can't play electrical instruments in the rain and not, you know, find out years later that was all fucking, you know, they're up there just lip syncing and, and I'm like, still cool. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like watching war. You're like looking at them like, how the fuck do you play covered in goo? Yeah. No. Nope. Still be fucking awesome though. It, 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 there, there are certain things that I'm, I'm glad I got to see and I wish my kids would have been able to see it. And I joke around because I, t- I, I told my kids, they're like, well, Ozzy never got a farewell tour. I'm like, I saw him on his first well, fa- farewell tour in 92 <laughs> on a No More Tours tour. Yeah. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen so many bands that were like, oh, we're not going to tour anymore. Okay, we're touring again. Yeah. They're like, oh, but we kind of like those paychecks. Oh yeah, <laughs> or, or or just hanging out. Like I'm I'm a fan of the band Prong, and I I got to see them open for Ozzy in '92 on the uh, what was it? I think I was begged to differ tour, and uh, then I end up at a Power Man Stone Sour show they opened for, and I'm standing at the at the bar getting my wife a drink. And I look over and there's Tommy Victor of Prong. And we start talking. And he's like, what you drinking? I was like, oh, I'm getting this for my wife. And he goes, ah, oh, he's getting a beer. And I'm like, sitting, I'm like, I, I'm, and he, I, they hand me this big fucking big gulp of beer. And I'm like, all right, cool. I guess I'm having a beer with Tommy Victor of Prong. <laughs> so I'm like fucking drinking it, <laughs> hanging out. Uh, but I, 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 I wish my kids could have experienced that because now everybody has a fucking meet and greet. Everybody charges. You can't 
just fucking meet them. You can't go out and hang out with them. I, I've I've literally hung out with uh, the drummer from Kitty because she was just sitting at our table, and we're like, I looked over her and I look at my wife and I'm like, is that? And she's like, I think it is. And and mind you, my wife is big time pregnant because we thought my youngest son would have been born because all my kids are early. My last son was late, oh. so we're, like, we're figuring that we would have been in. The show with the, she would he would have been born before we would have been to the show, so literally she's big time pregnant. We're at a concert, so technically his first concert was Kitty before she. Was <laughs> and we're just sitting there, and she's like, "Oh my god, are you pregnant?" No, and Tina's like, "No, yeah, I'm pregnant." <laughs> uh, but you, you don't get that. It sucks, but yeah. every once in a while you get some of these bands that are just on the cusp of being huge and they still interact with their with their fan yeah. base and you're just like yes although i wish i wish my favorite band would do that my favorite band's really chill they when they're done they're done they're gone clutch i love clutch no, okay. and uh i a matter of fact i just bought transnational speedway their first album signed nice <laughs> My, my son goes, did you see what they put on their website? And I'm like, no, and I'm staring at it. And I'm like, it's never been on vinyl. Okay. There's, okay, it's signed. Okay. 7,000 copies worldwide. That's not bad. Okay. Uh, how much is it? Okay, it's 50 bucks. It's not horrible. Okay. Um, then it ends up being like 70 with shipping. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> all right, fuck it. Get it, ship it. <laughs> yep. Get it on its way. Yep. And now it's sitting over here. People are like, you gonna listen to it? I'm like, eventually. I, <laughs> I, I, I do all my vinyl I listen to eventually. I even have one of 50. And somebody goes, you listen to it? I'm like, fuck yeah, I listen to it. I'm one of 50. <laughs> so, ah, uh, shit, dude. Um, you're over yawning and I'm getting hungry. Uh, <laughs> I just am sitting still too long. Oh, I, I I I got up this morning, went to the gym, worked out, came home, mowed the yard, got it all trimmed. Then I sat down to relax, forgot I was supposed to meet a guy to go look at an arcade cabinet. And I was like, oh, shit, yeah. So I just got up, hauled ass over there, looked at the arcade cabinet, came back, and then we're ready for this. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I went to the grocery store, took my kid to go get something to drink because he was out of stuff to drink. So I was like, all right, bud, you want to get something to drink? Yeah. I'm like, all right, get in the car. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. Long story short, I'm getting a Virtual Fighter 2 cabinet next week. <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question. Did you get the damn cabinet? Yeah, it, 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 needs, a, it needs a little work. Uh, the punch buttons don't work right, so I'm going to have to pull the thing off and see if the connections are right or if the buttons are dirt and whatever. And I'll probably have to replace the speakers because it's like... <sighs> you like and you like you turn you like turn it it's like really low or really loud and so, <laughs> no in between yeah so yeah my goal is in it, by the end of this year i'll be in a new location with an arcade in my store so nice i want to have people be able to come in play video games and hang out because I'll, I'll move all this stuff out of my my house so i can actually have room Although I although I'm not gonna lie, the X-Men cabinet and Star Wars cabinet will probably stay here because I still like I'll get a burn up my ass at like two in the morning and be over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Two great games, man. Still one of my favorite games of all time. If you'd have told 14-year-old Paul that he would eventually own one, I'd be like, oh. and then it's Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. If I own two, it'd probably be the X-Men game and Golden Axe. Oh. I'm 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 Probably gonna get. I, 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 there's three more arcade one ups. I want. I want the arc, the Golden Axe slash. I think Altered Beast, uh, Tron, and uh, uh, Dragon Slayer. Oh yeah, Dragon Slayer. Jesus, I forgot I, about. That. I, I used to have Dragon Slayer, but I just had the laser disc. That oh wow. yeah, because it's all all the game cabinet is is a laser disc player. Really? Yeah, so whenever you'd hit the buttons and you'd do the controller, that would be no different than what you do on your controller on your on your thing. You could literally play if I would have had a laser disc player at that time and I uh, you could have played uh um Dragon's Lair with your remote 
for your DVD player or your laser yeah. player. That was but one I had of the first games on Sega CD. Yeah. And we had it, but oh, we were in a pier and beam house, and that Sega CD sucked, dude. Every time somebody stepped, it would skip. And it just, it, yeah, it was fucking terrible, bud. Yeah, I loved my Sega CD. I still got mine somewhere. Well, you probably didn't have a pier and beam house. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I had a solid concrete floor. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah, like that, they would have been okay. But you could, I mean, you could sneeze at them, bro, and they would skip. Mm. They were terrible. Yeah. So I, I remember the first one I got, uh, I lived in my first apartment, which is an upstairs apartment. And I had one game for it. I had, was it WrestleMania? <laughs> Those games were fun as fuck. You got the really cool video footage, the live footage. And then it went to like the arcade picks, uh, you know, and then it went back to the, and then it went back to the. Yeah, yeah. It reminded you of those little rubber wrestlers you'd get at the grocery store for yep, like a they're like. <laughs> Holy shit. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to do that because right now I have upstairs, I have extra Mortal Kombat and Rampage upstairs. Down here, I have a barcade. I have, uh, oh, Space Invaders, X Men, Star Wars, Turtles, Mortal Kombat, um, Street Fighter, X Men, and then Marvel, the Capcom Marvel. And then, ironically enough, the one over here that you can't see because there's literally clothes setting on it because it's, <laughs> it's the, it's the, uh, um, the uh, cabinet, the the cocktail cabinet, and that's the Street Fighter one. It has uh, Dark Stalkers and and uh, uh, all that. It's got like twelve games on it, but yeah, literally it, it everything gets set on top of it. I, I hate that. But <laughs> my, my my youngest son, he he, I go and I go take your clothes upstairs and put them in your dresser. Mm -hmm. They sit down here because he he wants to sleep on my couch down down here. So he gets up and he just grabs his clothes and goes upstairs and takes a shower. And I'm like, all right, I guess if I want to play this, I got to pull all that shit off, play it, and then put shit back on her. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, man. Ah, this has been fun, dude. I, I We're, yeah, we're going to have to do one where we just fucking like a five-parter. Just, just keep talking and talking and talking and talking until we you run out of shit to talk about. You never run out of shit. That, then we'll have to get together. We're gonna have to watch a movie, and then we're gonna have to rate that movie. <laughs> oh yeah! Like we we need to do a uh, or do like a a riff track on a movie. So we'll all have to be watching that movie while we're doing this, so people can just watch the movie. Dude, we need to figure out how to do that. That would be funny. Well, I, I I'm pretty sure. I mean, hmm. I mean. I, I'm, I, I, we can, we can do that, but, but except for we, you can't, they can't watch it. They'd have to go, okay, we're watching this movie. You need to watch it right now with us because there's all those legal loopholes and stuff that you can't show. So, oh, really? Well, I know that, that, um, like riff tracks, they used to do riff tracks and they would riff track everything, but they would, um, they would show the movie and they're like, okay, we're watching Alien. Okay. Start your movie right now. And it would sync up, and then you would watch it with them, and mm. so you could watch it with their because you're watching it on your TV, but you're running the riff track in the background. Oh, yeah, hmm. yeah. Well, we're uh, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to do that with wrestling with some people, get some people together, or we're gonna watch old wrestling because there's so much old wrestling out there that has no copyrights on because fucking you know joe schmo right. federation you know and uh in uh west georgia illinois or something like that <laughs> the one time the sheik showed up to wrestle for them you get to see that so you were gonna do that on watch watch shitty wrestling and make fun of it <laughs> nice. nice yeah <laughs> but uh Oh yeah, man. Well, man, I have had a blast. This has been so much fun. Like I said, oh, we're gonna have to do something where we can all get back on here and have more time, and and uh, we're gonna have to give Tony more shit about his uh, acting. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're, yeah. 
when, when you play yourself in a movie, is it really acting? Right. Uh, <laughs> see, I, I will say that till the day I die. Um, uh, De Niro just plays De Niro in everything he's ever done. Jack Nicholson was the same. Is the same way. They just play yeah. themselves. I was like, we're like, oh, they're such a good actor. I'm like, I could be a great actor if I was playing Paul in everything I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, see, those guys though that that is how. I learned to cat how to get believable characters out of my actors because you've seen it. I mean, my acting or my actors seem better than a lot of independent, but it's only because I wrote the characters around their personalities. Yeah. So they're acting like themselves, but it's a hundred percent believable. I'm just giving them the words to say instead of making them be another character. Now, the ones that are actually actors, you can tell because they have bigger characters that are yeah. far beyond. But yeah, that's I actually I was like, man, all these guys get by because they're the same person. I was like, I could do that. I could use that, and it helped a lot. Just play yourself. Yeah, like you know, I've talked to a lot of people that are like my friends that are wrestlers and stuff. They just they're themselves turned up to eleven, and mm-hmm. they just are slightly exaggerated. Tony's. Just himself played up to 11 you know yep. a lot of these horror hosts same way what's really funny is when you find the one person who's like i yeah i'm nothing like my character on tv i'm like how the yeah. hell did you get there then <laughs> yeah that's uh kennedy the girl that plays the commander uh-huh. if you met her you would be fucking blown away she is a typical 20 year old girl <laughs> like she's nothing like the character the character she doesn't even talk that way so she's phenomenal, dude. <laughs> That's acting. When, when yeah. people when, see when people can get out and become somebody else completely. Mm-hmm. That's what I always liked about Doug Jones, the the the, the guy that does all the suits and stuff like that. That guy. Mm-hmm. Then when he seemed like being himself, you're just like, huh? Yeah. 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 So, all right, man. <laughs> you have a good night. I'm gonna go eat because I'm getting hungry. And <laughs> all right, brother. You too. And I'll talk to you soon. Later, man. Bye.